Hi, Handy Hank Wankler back again with Handy Bob. And you know, every once now and again, if you're like me, you go to a party. And at these parties, sometimes you just don't know what to do to get them going. Well, here's our next handy hint. You just get yourself a regular piece of paper, and you take it, and first off, you fold it in half. Okay. And after fold it in half, you take the corner, and you bend this one back to here. Like this. You just do the same thing on the other side, like this. Then you fold this corner over to here. Make a nice little fold so it looks something like this. This side back, like this. This side back, about like this. You squish it all down. Sort of unfold one half like this so you can see the fold. Twist it, little tear at the bottom. And then you just set that right there on the table. And you know what? You get folks to guess what it is. My name's Brett Claxon. I've been asked to say a few words about our good friend and our fellow worker, Michael Blacklock. First, I want to offer my condolences to the family, to Mike's wife, Lou, to his mother and father, to his children, to his grandchild. I just want them to know how sorry we, his fellow workers, are in Mike's passing. I'm here on a sound stage at the Bridge Studios. Uh, I spent the last eight years standing around in sound stages like this with Mr. Mike Blacklock. Through thick and thin, through problems, through good times, through bad times, through some pretty silly situations, through some pretty dramatic situations, we worked out a lot of problems together. We also had a lot of fun. Uh, I did the Outer Limits and Highlander with Mike, and in both shows, he worked as the special effects coordinator. He did a great job, too. The best job anybody could do. I remember the first day I met Mike Blacklock. He came into my office, he sat himself down, introduced himself. I didn't know him. I'd never seen him before. He started talking, started talking about himself and his relationship to special effects. And I gotta tell you, in one minute flat, I was impressed. In one minute flat, I thought that, man, this guy is special. The way he talked, the way he handled himself, the tone of his voice, the conviction in his voice, the knowledge that he seemed to have, it impressed me. And it made me think that this was a real special guy. And you know what, in the eight years after that first meeting, not one time was that first impression ever in doubt. When I think about Michael, I think about a lot of different things. I think about honesty, total honest, honest guy, total honest guy. No BS, what you saw was what you got. I think about integrity, nobody had more integrity than Mike Blacklock. I think about courage, the courage to face life, and at the end, the courage to face death. I think about good humor. Good humor is an important aspect of making films because believe me, we're not all in good humor a lot of the time, myself included. And uh, if you were ever a fly on the wall and saw some of the <clears throat> more tense moments in this business, you'd probably be surprised. I don't ever remember Mike being part of anything but the good humor. He was always in good humor. I think of common sense. Uh, you know, common sense is a rare thing. And it's been said many times that uh, common sense can get you, uh, get, get you quite far in your life. And, and I believe that. And Mike Blacklock had a lot of common sense. He had a way of taking all the BS, all the confusion, and, and all the difficulties, and just taking it right down to the very common denominator, cutting through everything, and just laying it on the table for exactly what it is. I think of Mike as being a friend to everybody. I know that. He was a friend of mine. I know that everybody on the crew of Outer Limits loved him. I know that everybody on the crew of Highlander loved him. I know that everybody who I meet in the industry speaks highly of him and, have, and always have speak, spoken highly of him. I, uh, I just really can't say enough about him. He was a class guy, a first-rate guy, just somebody really special. 
Now, we've put together a montage here of some of Mike's work. It was compiled by Matt Gore in the visual effects department and the editing department on the outer limits, and I want to thank them for doing that. It's a montage of some of Mike's more special moments, and knowing Mike the way I do, I think that he would be really happy and really pleased that we were having a chance to see some of his work here tonight. So sit back and enjoy the next seven or eight minutes. This is the best of Michael Blackrock. This is what Mike was all about in his work and what he did.
making stuff for what? The best of Mike Blacklock. Mike Blacklock at work. And you know what? I'd forgotten a lot of those things. I was there. I remember my heart going like this. Just thank God it was Mike that was doing it. Anyways, Mike, we're going to miss you. We're going to miss you a lot. But we're not going to forget you. You will forever be in our hearts and in our minds. And your legacy to me, and I think to a lot of other people, will be that we will hold you up as a shining example of what a person should be in their lives and what a person can be. So goodbye, Mike. We'll see you one day. Bye-bye. Jeff Barmash has been a good friend of Mike's for many, many years. They've grown together, they've achieved together, they've done things that many, 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 many people are not only aware but proud of. And I would be honored now if Jeff could come up and say a couple of things about Mike. When Michael asked me to say a few words at the ceremony, he had several requests as to how it should be handled. His first is that it be kept short and real. And in keeping this with this request, I will mention only a few of the many examples and ways that Michael's friendship touched and enriched my life. The one thing I've always found most inspiring about Michael is his can-do attitude. Mike and I met and became fast friends about 15 years ago. We worked together in a dubious job for a rather questionable advertising venture. And it became our habit to go out together on Friday afternoons after we had work, have a few drinks, grab some dinner, and see what kind of trouble we could get into. It was one such Friday evening, Michael turned to me and he said, you know, this advertising thing is okay, but it's not very fulfilling. We should be in the movie business. You know, I looked at Michael like he was from another planet, told the bartender to cut him off immediately. But he persisted with this idea throughout the evening. Finally, I said, Michael, what makes you think you could just go out, get a job in film, and what in the world do you think you would do anyways? Michael thought for a minute. He said, well, volunteered a couple of weekends once over Roger's Cable. So, I once read a book about the movie business. I used to fiddle with dynamite a little bit out in the oil fields. I says, I could be a special effects coordinator. Well, I could see Michael wouldn't be dissuaded, so I thought I'd try another tact. I said, well, Michael, that's fine for you. What about me? I'm the least technical guy on the planet. The only nail I can hit with a hammer is my thumbnail, and I wouldn't know one end of a camera for another. Well, Michael just looked at me, they gave me the big smile. You all know the one. That half sly, half mischievous, hungleberry thin grin. And he says, no problem. You can be a producer. For Michael, there was never a problem too big. Anything could be done, could be done with a smile. Michael's second request was a tough one, but he was very adamant about it. He said, I want people going home feeling warm and fuzzy, not sad and crappy. Mike and I have always been completely honest with each other, and I had to tell him that I thought this was a pretty tall order. 
I said, Michael, how many funerals have you gone home from? Not feeling sad and crappy. He just looked at me, gave me the smile. He said, Jeff, how many funerals have you been to that had fireworks? I said, send them home warm and fuzzy. Mike said something to me the last time I saw him that I know I took a lot of comfort in and would like to share with all of you. He told me that he was at peace. He told me that he knew that this was not really the end, and that he was ready to go through the gateway. The last thing that Michael said to me will undoubtedly always be my fondest memory of all. We stood in the doorway of his house, both knowing that this was our final farewell. Mike flashed me that giant smile that no amount of pain or chemotherapy or cancer could diminish an iota and said, it's been fun, bud. Right to the end, Michael's spirit and the strength of his character was such that he rejoiced in and was truly grateful for all that he had rather than bitter for what he was denied. Michael and Lou taught me the secret to a successful marriage. Michael was undoubtedly the most happily married man I'd ever met, as well as a very proud father and grandfather. Michael, you'll, you'll be missed with many tears, but you'll always be remembered with a smile.